In my experience as a pastor and in my interactions with other church leaders, I know that churches sometimes struggle with how to make disciples in a maximum way. Approaches that worked well in the past may not be as effective today. Well, in this talk, we're going to look at a holistic process for making disciples that involves churches growing in 11 key areas. This strategic pathway of discipleship attempts to integrate a biblical understanding of discipleship with an understanding of contemporary culture. Obviously, some elements may be more important in a particular context, while other elements not included in this list may need to be added to it. So the first element is a prayer saturation. Prayer permeates disciple-making churches. How can we grow a culture of prayer, a culture in which God delights to work deeply in people's lives? It starts by the leaders, I think, setting an example of prayer to the rest of the congregation. It's having prayer initiatives. It's encouraging small groups to be active in prayer. It's providing prayer resources. There's many ways that we can cultivate a spirit of prayer within our churches. The second key area for making disciples in a maximum way is loving Christ-centered community. Discipleship occurs best in communities where people lovingly practice life-on-life -life discipleship. What can leaders do to develop this kind of intimacy, to practice the one another's of Scripture? And I think, again, in our small groups, that, that they become the place where this can be practiced in a significant way. And then, of course, in our one-on-one -on -one relationships through coaching, mentoring, through friendships that we build with other people. Loving Christ-centered community where deep discipleship can occur. The thir third key area is having a growth orientation. When everything in the church is geared toward helping people take next steps, growth becomes normative and expected. Discipleship can really flourish in this kind of growth-oriented environment. In this kind of a, a church culture, people are, are always thinking about, how do, I, how do I grow in my relationship with Jesus? How can I grow in my effectiveness in serving Him? And so that kind of ethos then lends itself naturally towards wanting to make disciples, helping people develop in their walk with the Lord. The fourth key area is a personalized approach. Even though programs can provide a context in which discipleship can occur, we must strive to come alongside individuals and help them take next steps. This personalized approach is a requirement for in-depth discipleship. There may have been a time when we could sort of call groups of people to come to a certain level of understanding, but increasingly we need to have a personalized, customized approach where we come alongside people and walk with them in the journey of life. The fifth key area is a missional mindset. Without a strong desire to reach lost people, churches are really unlikely to have the passion and motivation to devote a significant amount of time and energy to, to making disciples. A main goal of making disciples is so that we can make more disciples, so that those disciples go out into the community, into their workplaces, their neighborhoods, and, and have those meaningful conversations with people where they can bless people and serve and demonstrate Christ in those relationships. Key area number six is biblical teaching. Good sermons can help people know and follow Jesus. We need strong biblical teaching that exposes people to the whole counsel of God and motivates them to greater depths of obedience. Key area number seven is practical training. What are the, the training needs in your church that will help people grow in their relationship with God, to develop godly character, 
to understand and to live out their calling, to invest more deeply in the lives of others and, and to hone skills for serving God more effectively. Providing timely and relevant training in those areas will help people grow as disciples of Jesus. Key area number eight is robust small groups. I've referred to them already a few times. In their book, Small Groups, Big Impact, Jim Igley and Dwight Maribel share about their research with 2,000 small group leaders. Groups that want to grow have leaders who are focused on prayer, reaching out to the lost, caring for people, and empowering group members to serve. We have an entire training video on their research on the small groups page on the Ministry Lift website if you're interested in learning more. These kinds of robust small groups are effective in making disciples. Key area number nine is accountability. Dr. Dave Curry, president of Doing Family Right, has said this, accountability is the volunteer surrender of your life to the regular and frequent uh, frequent scrutiny and encouragement of another person uh, for the purpose of ongoing life transformation that brings glory to God. This is a missing ingredient in many of our churches. Accountability where we hold each other to a higher standard, where we encourage one another to take those next steps and then we follow up with each other. Without this kind of accountability, discipleship suffers. Key area number 10 is a coaching, mentoring kind of culture. In a coaching, mentoring culture, people recognize that every conversation holds disciple-making possibilities. People regularly make disciples as they engage in both structured and spontaneous mentoring conversations. Finally, number 11 is personal spiritual discipline. We all recognize the importance of spiritual disciplines like prayer and meditating on scripture. As important as these are, their purpose is to actually help us live a life of spiritual discipline where we surrender every part of our life to him. As people grow in their capacity to live spiritually disciplined lives, they will live as vibrant disciples of Jesus who actively make disciples of others. Well, if you're interested in hearing more about these 11 markers for developing a strategic pathway for discipleship, you can watch the full training video on the Ministry Lift Discipleship page.